Mr. Ayanshi, you said by rule everyone has 10 minutes to speak. Yes. What rule? Right in here. That's in there. So that can that be limited by the bylaw? No. You can never, ever limit someone's ability to debate or to speak. How, how do you limit? Because you mentioned limit. You can. Now, what, what the chairman would have to do or what you would have to do either at the beginning of the meeting or on a particular motion. You know, you would have to, you know, stand up, Mr. Chairman. I move that we only have two people speak for, two people speak against, and then we put it to a vote. The chairman will then take that question the same way you say it. He will then put it to the assembly. And since that's not passed, it's open to debate by everybody. Once it is put after the debate is taken on the question, he'll then put it again. And what happens is, is something like that, to limit debate, has to pass by a two-thirds vote of the people in the room. So you can limit it by a two-thirds vote? If you have a two can, you, can you do that from the start? You can do that from the start. You can take precedent over the whole meeting. A lot of times they'll say, well, we have a standing rule. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as standing rules when it comes to limiting the debate. It may be a practice, but a practice is not a standing rule. And a practice does not take precedent over the bylaws and Robert's Rules of Order. One other question. When, you, when somebody calls a question, though, how does, why doesn't that cut off debate? What do you mean? Well, they call the question on the floor. Well, will you make a motion? Yeah. Okay. But somebody gets up then and has some debate, and they just say, oh, you know, Mr. Chairman, I want to call the question. What it would go is, you, Mr. Chairman, I, I move to limit the debate to two people speaking for, two people speaking against, and then we vote on it. What will happen is then the chairman will ask that question, people will debate. After the debate has taken place, then when a, and a debate is, uh, somebody will get up, Marianne will get up and she'll speak on behalf of limiting the debate. Okay. Soon as she's done, you've got to be ready to go. Okay. You're not supposed to stand up or raise your hand, but as soon as you see her done speaking, you need to stand up, Mr. Chairman, and he'll identify you. Now, with making a motion or raising your hand, if you're not identified twice in a row, you can then get a second, overrule the chairman, and without his help, put a question to the committee. But the standard rule is, is that the people debating back and forth, after the debate is finished, the chairman will then put the question the way it was originally posed. Then the vote is taken. If two-thirds of the people on, a, on limiting the debate vote, yes, we want to limit the debate, then from that point on, for that motion, or whether it's set for the whole meeting, the debate is limited to two people speaking for and two people speaking against. That's something I strongly recommend against because what happens is, is they'll pick the two crack. If they don't like something that you're doing and you're saying we want to pass this, they're not going to pick the two people that know how to speak to be on your behalf. Mm -hmm. They're going to pick the two crackpots in the room that everyone thinks is crazy. Um, so, you know, that's why sometimes you don't want to, and, and that's routinely done in some areas. Well, what's the parliamentary maneuver that, that somebody calls the question and that cuts off the debate? What it, what it does is, yes, you can. You can call, if, it, if it's going back and forth with the debate, Okay, you could stand up and you could say, Mr. Chairman, I call previous question. <clears throat> and what that does is that halts everything temporarily. And then you work your way back through any motions that were added on to the main motion. But previous question, calling a previous question, since it is, in a way, limiting debate, that also has to pass by two-thirds vote. Okay. Okay, and that is a debatable motion, and it also needs a second. <coughs> uh, anything that limits the debate, anything that changes bylaws, anything that is going to take action uh, against somebody in a disciplinary form, all requires a two-thirds vote. You know, there's other things in there, but to sum it up, if you're changing bylaws, if you're limiting debate, or if you're going to be taking disciplinary action against somebody, that requires a two-thirds vote. And your privilege motions, okay, um, is if you see the agendas going out of order, if they're not following the order of the agenda, 
that they have given out to you guys. You would simply stand up, Mr. Chairman, you know, I call for orders today. And that means they need to automatically revert back to the way the agenda is posed. Usually they'll jump out of a line of the agenda, but it's usually not over something that important or, or that, uh, from what I've seen, where it's, you know, going to hurt anybody if you go out of order. Um, but it, it, it can't, you know, not knowing exactly what's going to be taking place in all these meetings. It, it can possibly be used uh, to where you guys might try to stop them from doing something that you don't necessarily like. Hey, there's a second, there's a motion, and there's a second, then they have a vote, and then they say, is there any discussion? Like, That's we already voted. Discussion. What's the discussion? Yeah, yeah. you got to do discussion before the final vote. Yeah, I call a know? point of order on that. Like, what's the discussion? Mr. Chairman, is the <coughs> vote been, <coughs> <has to vote? coughs> been voted? No. There's, there's nothing else to discuss. So That's, where, it's been, where it's been important, something, you know, it's not really happening. It's just been in other meetings where it's like, they do, and it's like, we're all in consensus anyway, so who cares? But, you know, if you get there, you know, once you've had the vote, and, you know, the only way to have more discussion is put in a motion. You know. But you can go back and revisit votes on items that were passed for previous meetings. What's that? Revisit, there's, I think there's, revisit, there's two or three of them, I think, you can possibly, possibly use on that. But that's a, that's a motion or a second it's a discussion of the report by itself. All right, the voting is where it gets really, really fun. Um, but before we get to that, I want to bring up and see endorsements. A lot of times, it may be different down here. I've seen several counties where they'll come out with a sheet of paper They'll say the scanning committee has voted or decided, has recommended that we endorse these candidates. And there's some 35 names on each of them. Many of these counties will give you an up and down vote on all 35 names. One at the end, not one at a time, but just, yeah, we want everybody on that sheet. They're great. Or you'll get a question that's got three or four parts to it, uh, or with bylaws you'll see a whole sheet of bylaws uh, you know, with recommended changes. Sometimes you'll see where they try to pass them you know, all together at one time. You have the right for the book okay, to stand up and ask that it be divided. And what that does is, there's a kind of term that I didn't take my um, You can ask that it be divided. And what that does is it basically will take that question that's being put, they'll take it apart, and you will then vote on each segment of it. So say like with bylaws, there's proposal 5, you know, A, proposal 5, B, C, D, E, F, G. You, by doing that, you now go, instead of voting all on them as a whole, you'll now go, and you'll go through each particular item. 